we're looking around and I'm like, I have no idea what I'm looking for. I'm looking at the surface of the water and I'm a salmon still hitter. I mean, I can see a tree here and it looks like there's some rock points over there, but outside of that, I have no idea what I'm seeing. And I turn on the hummingbird finder and I immediately, with 360 imaging, see everything around me and just in incredible clarity and again one of my favorite moments of the show is I'm looking at this and I go that's a fish and I look down and I look up and I make a cast and the fish is on Welcome to the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast, inspiring real women with a passion for fishing and the outdoors to go get their adventure on. Now, here's your fearless host, Angie Scott. Hey, welcome to the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast. I'm Angie Scott. I hope you've been hanging in there during this crazy time and hopefully making the best of it. I know it's a tough situation. A lot of uncertainty going on, but, um, you know, hopefully you're taking advantage of the time and uh, maybe taking in some great fishing content that's out there online or like on the Waypoint TV app. One thing I wanted to talk about is the series that Hummingbird and Minkota just put out called the One Boat Network Challenge, and uh, it's a series of four episodes and they're, they've all been released at this point, so you can go to OneBoatChallenge.com and check them all out. They're also up on Minkota's YouTube page. But this week on the Woman Angler and Adventure podcast, I'm going to be talking with one of the contestants from this show, Ashley Nicole Lewis, a.k.a. Bad Ash. So I got to get a sneak peek of this new series at the Bassmaster Classic in Birmingham. It's a pretty cool show. It's very fast-paced. The episodes seem like they fly by, a lot of action, and it's an interesting concept demonstrating the advantages of this Hummingbird Minn Kota One Boat Network, which includes the Mega 360 Imaging, Altrex Minn Kota Trolling Motor, and the Talon Shallow Water Anchor. So uh, to have a system like that, uh, you, you're definitely going to have an advantage but it was fun um, because Ashley is a salmon and steelhead guide. She's not a bass angler. So to be kind of dropped in the middle of El Salto, Mexico, and having to figure this out and catch bass with uh, her teammate. Her teammate, Cameron Black, is also a salmon and steelhead guide. They're both from Pacific Northwest, the green team for this. And uh, it's just a pretty cool. Some of the other contestants include Louis Vito, who's an Olympic snowboarder, and he got paired up with Willie Young, who's an NFL defensive end. And we've got saltwater anglers from Florida, Charlie Breitenbach and Seth Funt. And then uh, Tyler Anderson, you might have seen him on YouTube, and Michael Roy. And uh, they're the Bass and Striper Angler team. So anyway, uh, super fun show. Go check it out. And I hope you enjoy my interview with Ashley. She's also got some really exciting stuff coming up that uh, you're definitely going to want to hear about. So uh, sit back and enjoy. So first of all, I notice as I've been kind of following you, I I think I first found out about you when you launched your podcast because I was like I was like oh cool somebody else is doing a, a podcast. So I listened to a few episodes and, uh, and that's kind of I guess how I got introduced to you. How how has that been going? You know it was going really really well. It's not really anything I did as um, I'm not like trying to be a, a podcast you know star or anything like that I just kind of needed a creative outlet mm -hmm. and I wanted to talk about the funny things that happened in my fishing career and life and um so really really well and there's a handful of episodes that are just kind of about like silly things and um have done like really really well and then I took a bit of a hiatus as I was finishing up school and then I'm back at it now um but I love podcasting like it's so nice to just be able to like 
tune in, listen to something that you are interested in and care about, and kind of continue on and do some other things in your day. You can be productive and listen to a podcast, which is great. Um, so it's been fun for me to create, and I'm a huge podcast fan anyway. So Awesome. Yeah, well, you've probably learned, though, too, it's a lot of work. <laughs> Absolutely. Some yes. people don't realize, you know, you think it's just as simple as record, hitting record and uploading. And, you know, and you can make it that easy, but I think if you want to put out a really good show that, you know, people – enjoy listening to you got to put a little more work into it on the back end and then you got to think about uh seo and all that kind of stuff that people don't realize you got to do on the on the behind the scenes kind of thing so so kudos to you for for uh doing a podcast thanks i appreciate it i think the uh podcasting scene is really blowing up right now and i'm a fan as well so you know especially during this crazy time that we're in it's been nice because I listen to a lot of business podcasts and stuff. And so a lot of the people that I listen to are now addressing all the issues, you know, that are going on right now. And it's kind of nice to have that as a resource, you know, you're like, okay, I'm not alone in this. (laughs) Yeah, it's a way to, you know, kind of keep you connected to things outside of your own home, which we desperately need right now. So I think podcasts are more, I mean, as relevant as they've ever been, and maybe more. Right. Yeah, I I agree 100%. And then I saw not too long ago, I think you're, are you doing something with um, TakeMeFishing.org now? Yeah, so I got hooked up with the Take Me Fishing uh, organization uh, last, wow, is it a month ago, a month and a half ago? Man, this year, like, the weeks <laughs> no. feel like months this year. Um, and we got together in Florida with a handful of other uh, women angler influencers and, you know, did a little bit of work and had some really exciting discussions and a panel at the Miami Boat Show around getting women involved in the fishing industry, keeping women involved in the fishing industry, some of the barriers, what's going really well, what isn't going really well. Uh, so since then, I've kind of stayed in touch with them and, you know, current times have all sorts of things derailed and I certainly intend on you know strengthening that relationship as we all work harder to get women involved in this industry in angling and and beyond yep yep it's been great to have rbff and take me fishing.org as a resource especially for women because they've been such a a force in you know trying to promote and get more women involved in the sport so uh we've we've worked with them as well and um and hope to do more in the future too and it's just been they're just a great uh group of people to to work with yeah so, absolutely <clears throat> i saw some of the photos from the the miami boat show event and that looked like a lot of fun <laughs> It was a blast. I'd never been to Miami either, so I was in all sorts of heaven. Cool, cool. Well, so then I guess not too long after that was the Bassmaster Classic uh, down in Birmingham. And uh, had you been to the any classics prior to that? No, I'd never even been to a bass tournament before. Oh, wow. I had no idea what I was getting myself into, let alone <laughs> going to the Bassmaster Classic. And boy, did I learn. Or did I learn that there was this other you know, section of the fishing industry and it is big. <laughs> yeah, it's it's huge and I think it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger every year. Some of these you know, these bass anglers they're they're becoming these huge personalities that have incredible followings. It's just crazy to watch. Um and I last last year so this year was my second Bassmaster Classic. Last year was the first time, and I was kind of, I felt like you. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, like, what an amazing platform for these anglers, uh, too. And so, I mean, there's, yeah, I mean, just the the weigh-in event alone and all of the activities that go around that and, then, you know, the media day associated with it. There's just, there's so much, and it's a fantastic platform for these anglers to you know, talk about their careers and their causes and what a cool event. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's funny this year, um, you know, this, it kind of, it was probably one of the last big events that actually happened in uh, fishing or the sporting industry before everything started getting shut down because I, I don't know what your experience was like there, but I was just like getting people messaging me saying, Hey, um, this coronavirus thing's kind of serious. I don't know, 
you know, it's probably spreading down that way. Maybe you should be concerned. And I was like, oh, geez, like what's going on? You know, and I think uh, I feel pretty fortunate because there were a lot of people there packed in a very, you know, tight space for how many people that were actually there, like at the expo. And uh, I feel pretty lucky to have gotten out of there without getting any kind of uh, illness. <laughs> I heard a lot of people got the flu. <laughs> so Yeah, yeah, isn't that the truth? And, and I flew back into Seattle, and at the time, as this was all ramping up, Seattle was the hot spot of the nation, the first mm-hmm. um, cases in the nation, and was quickly the first big hot spot for COVID-19. And I was concerned that I wasn't going to be able to fly home. I was worried yeah. that I was, you know, going to spend a little bit of extra time in Birmingham, Alabama. And then when I did fly home a couple of days later, uh, so another part of my my job is that I, um, I work with the uh, Lachlan trade shows, which is the Pacific Northwest, the Washington, and the Central Oregon Sportsman Show. Uh, so I flew in and went straight down to uh, Central Oregon to open up the Sportsman Show to quickly close it, like hours before mm. we were supposed to open, because the governor of Oregon had given the orders that no large gatherings um, could happen, and mm-hmm. and then and I've kind of been home ever since. Yeah, now our lives have been, we had no idea what was about to happen when we were down there in Birmingham, that's for sure. So, so talk about what brought you to the Classic this year. It's kind of exciting. Yeah, uh, so what brought me to the Classic was the premiere of the One Boat Challenge. And the One Boat Challenge was uh, a bass tournament held on El Salto Lake in Mexico. I got the invite from Hummingbird, Minn Kota, to come down to Mexico uh, alongside a handful of other anglers across the country who are, you know, known in their respective fisheries um, or otherwise are experts or guides to compete against them in a competition um, using the one boat network with Humberg Minkota on a Vexus boat. So essentially, we all got dropped in the middle of Mexico on a lake none of us had been on or been to before, and all but one had any sort of experience bass fishing, and then we were told to go and compete at the highest level possible. (laughs) And uh, so that show um, premiered at the Bassmaster Classic, which you got to see, Mm -hmm. and then uh, we are uh, going to let... Uh, this Thursday, the final episode uh, comes out of the One Boat Challenge. So it's been an exciting couple of weeks. Yeah, it was really cool to get to see those episodes there at the Classic. And it's just a really fun, I, f- I felt like the episodes just fly by because they're they're really fast paced and, um, you know, exciting to watch. And it's something different that no one's really done before. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like, kind of reminded me a little bit of like a Survivor type of format you know where they give you a specific challenge and you go out and see how good you can do using the one boat network can you tell people who might not be familiar what the one boat network is and and what it was like uh, being able to use that from billion dollar ad budgets and arena naming rights to tens of thousands of retail locations big wireless providers spend big to appear like they're your only option how do they afford it all (laughs) <laughs> that big bill you get at the end of every month. Mint Mobile had a different idea. Instead of brick and mortar overhead, Mint Mobile is online only. What does that mean for you? A whole lot of savings because wireless plans from Mint Mobile start at just $15 a month. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for just $15 a month. You'll save enough that you can get a brand new rod and reel for the upcoming season. For anyone who just hates their phone bill, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just $15 a month. All plans come with unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan, and you can even keep your same phone number along with all of your existing contacts. By going online only and eliminating traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash waypoint. That's mintmobile.com slash waypoint. 
Cut your wireless bill to $15 a month at mintmobile.com slash waypoint. Yeah, so the One Vote Network was, is essentially the link between uh, Minn Kota Motors and Hummingbird Fishfinder Electronics, where we got to take these boats with this setup and, you know, not knowing this area, not knowing bass fishing, not knowing what this, how big this lake is, to use those electronics to start targeting fish. So one of the, one of my favorite moments of the show is my partner and I had stopped uh, at this little, like, like inlet on the lake. And we're looking around and I'm like, I have no idea what I'm looking for. I'm looking at the surface of the water and I'm a salmon steelheader. So I'm... I'm fishing in current, I'm fishing in moving water, um, and, and, and I completely rely on the surface of the water, the little ripples and, and tail outs and things like that to tell me what's happening uh, on the bottom. And when you're in a lake and it's standing water, I'm like, I, I mean, I can see a tree here and it looks like there's some rock points over there, but outside of that, I have no idea what I'm seeing. And I turn on the hummingbird finder and I immediately, with 360 imaging, see everything hmm. around me in just incredible clarity. And again, one of my favorite moments of the show is I'm looking at this and I go, that's a fish. And I look down and I look up and I make a cast and the fish is on immediately. <laughs> and and to be able to have that kind of uh, information at your fingertips and that kind of success so quickly, that's when I realized how significant the One Boat Network is. So in addition to that, what I didn't met, mention is we had talons too. Um, so shallow mm-hmm. water anchor system. So we found a spot and we found fish with our hummingbird finder. We had our... Um, hummingbird motor to kind of like keep us in place and navigate us around where we want. And when we found a really good spot, we could just talon down and we are stuck in place and we are right where we need to be. And so, I mean, it's felt like fishing with an entire team uh, or network, if you will, of, of folks. And it was just me and my partner and this huge lake. Um, so, I mean, having those electronics and you get to see a lot of that in the show, how effective those things are. Uh, but really you get to see like, what is it like to be a new angler to an area, even if you're not a new angler in general and to have to figure that out. So, I mean, I think that we do it in a way that somebody that's newer to bass fishing or newer to fishing in general, once you get like kind of comfortable with the electronics, you're really in a good space to go out and have some, success pretty quickly yeah yeah so coming from your world um like uh, which i guess is mostly like steelhead fishing you said on on rivers i guess yeah exactly Uh so did it kind of feel like cheating in a way having all this at your disposal i mean yes and no so i mean i I'm a steelhead fisher and I fish in the Pacific Northwest and I fish in the rainforest. It's the only rainforest in the lower 48. Mm. So everything is like big trees, big water, very lush and dense forest and anadromous fish. So our fish spend part of their time in freshwater and majority of their time in the salt water. So they come in, um, come up river, they spawn and, you know, the, life cycle continues they either die or go back out to the ocean and and that's kind of what happens but once those fish hit the fresh water they're generally not a fish that's like super interested in feeding all of the time you really have to be keyed into um like you know, how far into the season you are what your conditions are like there's a lot that goes into it and so trying to apply that to bass fishing was in one aspect really easy in that I understand that like these fish are trying to find structure and here's how they're spending their time and, um, and you know, that sort of thing. But it was really difficult because bass are such a world different from steelhead and salmon. So I feel like I had the advantage in that if I need to cast right underneath that little branch and drop it right along this, my lure right along, along this rock face. Yeah, I can definitely mm-hmm. do that. I've spent some time doing that sort of thing. Um, when it comes to like trying to like pattern fish and figure out their behaviors, it's not a fish that I'm familiar with. And that was, that was completely a challenge. And so being thrown into that situation, but also that added layer and pressure of competition. And my competition wasn't just, you know, some folks that, you know, thought they'd try bass fishing one day. We're talking about like former NFL player, Willie Young Jr. We're talking about saltwater captains like Seth Hunt out of Florida. 
We're talking about like another salmon steelhead guy, Cameron Black out of the Northwest, um, like fishing sensation, Tyler Anderson, re- real fishing, and then a striped bass captain, uh, Mike Roy and you know, Louis Vito, who is a, an Olympic snowboarder. Like these people are not afraid of some competition and they're <laughs> all very competent people. Um, so that added layer of competition and having to figure it out, it was a challenge. And I really had to rely on those electronics and um, my, you know, the foundation that I have in fishing to carry me through that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I highly recommend everyone go check that out if you haven't already. I imagine. Um, so as we're recording this, this episode will probably come out in a couple weeks. So the final episode will already have been uh, released, but I imagine those are going to be up uh, indefinitely for people to go back and watch. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And the place that you want to watch it is one boat challenge.com. So you- because you can see them all there and you can enter to win the one boat network. So Ooh. if you go in, yeah, you can enter to win that and someone will be picked uh, to receive that entire setup like we use on the show. So definitely go check it out there. I think another place you can see it is uh, YouTube from Minn Kota. Um, if you check out their channel and subscribe to it, the episodes are all there as well. Yeah, so if you're somewhere and you're maybe not able to get out and fish right now or you're just bored uh, being quarantined at home, uh, it's why wouldn't you go check it out? It's great entertainment, super fun. You might learn something, and heck, you might win that awesome One Boat Network. That would be amazing. <laughs> I hear no downside to doing this. Yeah, so, exactly. yeah go watch. <laughs> So what's the uh, reception been like that uh, people, I imagine your friends and family and followers have been checking this out? What kind of feedback have you been getting on it so far? So I think some of my favorite pieces of it is they love seeing, you know, this person that they've supported and supported for years, like go off and do some of these really exciting things. What I've learned from this is how intensely, um, loyal and committed people are to like the sense of like region. So uh-huh. in these episodes, you know, we're all on different colored boats and the whole like hashtag go green team, hashtag go red boat, things like that kicked off pretty darn fast. And what was like, Hey, you know, Ashley and Cameron versus Willie and Louie versus, you know, Tyler and Mike turned into the Florida people versus, you know, <laughs> the, you know, the NFL, the, athletes boat versus the Pacific Northwest, it turned into like this more regional sort of deal. And it was really fun seeing people get behind like, oh, they'll never be able to take down anglers from the Pacific Northwest. Like, oh, these Florida guys, they've got it. Like, it was interesting seeing people like rally behind um, their their fisheries, their region. Um, So that's been some of the most fun for me to to watch people really get into it. Yeah, that's cool. Awesome. Well, yeah, again, go check that out. And uh, what what's up coming for you? Anything exciting once we get past all this? No one really knows how long it's going to last or where we're going to really end up. But um, if, you know, everything goes well, hopefully uh, any big plans coming up or exciting things? Yeah, I have some really exciting things coming up. So I partnered with NBC Sports Northwest for a digital series called Breakout with Bad Ash. And it is going to be, yeah, it is going to be essentially kind of what the title sounds like. Breaking down these barriers that get people into fishing and checking out all of these amazing and accessible fisheries in the Pacific Northwest. You get to see me as an expert doing some things and you get to see me as a novice, kind of like we saw in the One Boat Challenge at moments, like learning something new. Um, So that's going to be something that launches later this spring. So that's one thing really exciting coming up. Um, Another thing is since I've been home, and like many, many others, I have just reinvestigated the things I have hanging out in my freezer. (laughs) And my YouTube channel has been super active lately with how to cook up some of those things that we have in the freezer. As outdoors people, we have lots of fish and game, you know, Mm -hmm. that we've collected over the year and so one of my videos was how to cook my favorite riverside shore lunch with a little cooker like a little 
cooker that you would pack around. I have a little charbroil one um, with a cedar plank and a little piece of steelhead on it. So my favorite recipe for how I do that. And another like super quick and easy way to make smoked steelhead or salmon. So I've been, you know, turning it up in the kitchen and sharing a lot of those really great recipes. And again, approachable and things that, you know, folks that might be more afraid to work with fish or try you know, cooking with salmon or steelhead, super approachable, even if you've not done it before. So that is living on my YouTube channel, Badash Outdoors. Awesome. We'll share that link in our show notes as well as other links where people can follow you. I imagine um, Facebook and Instagram are two big places for you. Yeah, on both of those, Facebook and Instagram. Oh, and okay, I guess there's more of these now. And TikTok and what's another one? Oh, I'm on Twitter. Yeah, on all of those, same thing, at Badash Outdoors. Awesome. Hard to keep up with all those sometimes, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what am I on? <laughs> where are these things going? <laughs> I've tried I've tried out TikTok a couple of times. I know that that's kind of where it's at right now, but... Uh, I just haven't been able to get too into it yet, but it's it's pretty fun. It's it's easy to get lost just watching the silliest videos on it too. <laughs> so it's a rabbit hole. I try not to go down too often, but it's a blast. Right. Well. Well. Awesome. I'm gonna go to your YouTube channel and check out some of those videos. And uh, we got to do what we can do during this time. So I'm glad you're not just uh, sitting around like probably some people are doing. You're just making the best of it and. Uh, that, that sounds like fun and the NBC thing. That's super exciting. I hope we get to check that out. I don't know. I guess it airs regionally, I imagine. It does air regionally, but if you go to the NBC Sports Northwest website, anyone can see it there. Yeah, cool. Awesome. All right. Well, we'll definitely check that out when, the, when those come out. And uh, just, you know, great having you on the show finally. And um, hopefully we'll have you back on again. Sounds like you've got a lot going on, so I'm sure we'll need to catch up at some point. That sounds wonderful. Thank you so much for having me and stay safe, stay healthy. All right. You too. Thank you.